Hi, this is Jody from mcpactions.com. Today we're going to start a tutorial on layer masks. I know this is the hardest part about Photoshop for some people, but to me it's the most valuable thing you'll learn. So I'm going to do this in a few parts so that I can break it up and make it easier for everybody to learn. And you're going to want to go ahead and open up a photo. Doesn't matter what one. And I'm going to show you some things, hopefully we'll be able to make this pretty visual for you today, on how to use layer masks. The first thing is there's a number of different ways to get a mask in Photoshop. My favorite way, when possible, is under the Layer menu and then New Adjustment Layer. If you'll look under this panel, New Adjustment Layer, you'll see Levels, Curves, Color Balance, Brightness and Contrast, and then also the black and white, hue and saturation, selective color, channel mixer, gradient map, photo filters, exposure. All these areas will give you an adjustment layer with a layer mask built in automatically. So if you want to go ahead and we will select hue and saturation because I want you to really be able to see what I'm doing today. So we're going to call this layer mask tutorial. And... Now, once you're done and you click OK, you're going to see a dialog box come up. And you don't need to actually use hue and saturation. This is just for the sake of explaining it today. I'm going to go ahead and increase the saturation under the master channel for now. Let's say I wanted this shirt way brighter, which I don't, but I just want to show you so it's exaggerated. So I'm going to pull this up to 32. And you'll see now the turquoise looks, you know, nice and vibrant, almost too vibrant, but the skin looks orange. And that's not good. Well, let's go ahead and click OK. This is where layer masking comes in. What you want to do is white reveals and black conceals. And this is really, really important. So you're going to want to make sure to write that down, that white reveals, black conceals. And you have to try to think about it logically, because sometimes it's kind of backwards in the thinking. Um, so in this situation, we've got a white mask. So white's revealing the effect. The effect was increased saturation. So we've got white mask revealing the increased saturation. If we want to hide that effect, remember black conceals, we would want to select a black brush. So we're going to go over here in the brush palette. And this little arrow that points both ways will like swap those out. And right here, this will put you back to your default colors, which is white is the foreground, black is the background and then you can swap them. The shortcut keys for that is D for putting them back to the default and X on your keyboard for swapping them. So you can just do DX or you can come over here. The brush palette. You want a soft brush. What you're looking for is to be able to see the words. If you can't see the words right now, you'll go ahead, there's a little arrow right here and this will actually pull up um, some choices, small thumbnail, large thumbnail, small list or large list. Let's put it on small list and now you'll be able to actually read the name of your brushes in your brush palette. We want an airbrush soft round. It does not matter what size because we can change that with the keys, the right and left bracket keys which are above your enter key. So we'll go ahead and pick a soft round brush and you'll see in the little thumbnail you can see how it feathers out. It makes it much more forgiving when you're doing most masking. If it's too soft, you can actually change the hardness, but for now, let's go with this. You want your blending mode on normal, and you want your opacity, for now, up at 100%, and your fill up at 100%. As you're working and you get better at masking, you actually will change the percentages up there um, to help blend things. But for now, for the purpose of this first part of the tutorial, we're going to go ahead and just do that at 100%. Now, what you want to do is you're going to make your brushes pretty decent size here because we're just going to mask off the face with the black. So what you're going to do is use your right bracket key to make your brush bigger and back down in the layers palette make sure you have a little bit of a box around your layer mask. If you don't, like if I click, I'm going to try to get it to do some, oops, I'm going to try to get it off of there for a second, let's see. Well anyway, I can't, but if there was no box around there it would mean it wasn't selected which is a no-no, then you're going to be painting on your picture with like white or black. You don't want that. So once your box is selected, you're going to come up in here and actually paint on the parts of the photo that you don't want affected. So I'm using a big brush and then you'll see me getting it smaller. 
to come in here and paint on the skin and done. Now, if we click before and after, you'll see the before impacts just the shirt and this wood that I didn't mask out either. And you'll see the skin doesn't change either way because it's affected only by the background layer right now, which was the original skin. So you can see the shirt just changes colors. That is my part one on masking, layer masking. And hopefully you enjoyed it today. And I will be doing more on layer masking in the future. So keep listening out. Again, this is Jody from mcpactions.com. Hopefully you enjoyed my tutorial today. Thank you.